we had already talked about first level cache and when I said first level cache that means we have another level of cache present in Hibernate and that is second level cache. But unlike first level cache which comes by default and you can't disable it, second level cache has multiple implementations and you have the option to choose one. The one that I'm going to use and also the one which is very popular is EH cache. So we're going to leverage the functionality of second level cache by using EH cache implementation. But the main difference between these two cache is that the first level cache is scoped within a session and all the objects that are going to reside in the first level cache will have the life of a session. But whereas second level cache is scoped within the session factory and all the objects that are going to be present in second level cache can be accessed or visible to all the sessions that come under that session factory. So let's take a look at a very simple scenario of persisting a data and then retrieving it. Let's say that you're trying to store the employee data. So you would create a session and you would call session.save to save the employee details. So a copy of objects data will be copied not only in the first level cache but also to the second level cache before it gets persisted into the database. And then when you're trying to retrieve that object from the same session, since that object details is present in the first level cache itself, the object or its details or its data will be retrieved from this first level cache that corresponds to that session. But if you're trying to access the same object from another session, then since that object is not present in its first level cache, it will go and take a look at the second level cache. And in our example, that object is indeed present, so it would fetch the object data from the second level cache. So it doesn't have to go all the way to the database and fire a query to get the employee details. So this is going to affect positively in terms of application performance. So let us take a look at steps involved in configuring the second level cache. Also we're going to take a look at a very simple example. So here are the steps. First of which is to include all the libraries that are required. And in our case, since we want to use the EH cache implementation, we're going to include the following dependency in our Maven project. And once you include that, do make sure that you Maven update the project so that the respective libraries would be present in the repository. And optionally, if you'd like to get a little bit of control on the second level cache, or if you'd like to make changes to the default configurations, then you can also include the following dependency, which will enable you to do some customization on the second level cache. And when you're including this, you can also include this XML file with the exact same name, EH cache, where you would provide all the list of configurations required. And in addition to that, in order to actually enable second level cache in your application, you have to add the following properties in your Hibernate XML file. Or if you're using Hibernate properties file, then you have to add the following key value pairs. These two are essentially same. So by this property, you're just enabling the second level cache and you're providing here the implementation of second level cache. And finally, we're also enabling a query cache which we'll take a look at in later chapters when we talk about Hibernate query language. And finally, for all the entities that you want to be part of the second level cache, you have to provide the following annotation, cacheable, that will make these entities qualify for second level caching. And in addition to that, you can also provide the concurrency strategy by providing this annotation. We're going to talk about concurrency strategy option in coming videos. So let's go back to Eclipse and take a look at a very simple example. So I have the exact same code as previous. The only difference is I have now added this particular statement and that just prints total number of hits to second level cache memory. And of course, whatever the things that I had mentioned as part of this file, I have incorporated them. We got dependencies in the pom.xml. I also have those configurations set in the Hibernate file or if you have a different name, whatever it is. And in addition to that, 
in the only entity class that we have employee I have included these two annotations and that's all there is to it now let's take a look at what's going to happen when we run this program so first of all we're calling this method test within which we're just simply persisting the employee details just as you see in here so while this employee is getting persisted those details will be copied to first level cache of the session and then into second level cache and then into the database so since we closed on this session right here we've also lost the first level cache that corresponds to this session and in our test2 method I've created another session and then I'm trying to access that object or rather I'm trying to load that object now in our previous example this has resulted in a select query to the database so we got that object from the database as it was not present in the first level cache of this session but this time since the object's data is also saved in the second level cache this instruction would result in retrieving the employee data from the second level cache and there is no need to send a request to a database and while we are trying to retrieve the data from second level cache it will also copy it in the first level cache of the session and when we do session.evict we provide the object then it's going to remove the object from the session cache but not from the second level cache so even this instruction would fetch object details from the second level cache so ultimately I'm expecting number of entity fetch count to zero there, there is not going to be any data that gets fetched from the database and this should result in value 2 as they're going to be a couple of hits to second level cache now let's run the program and see the result and sure enough we have the expected output alright we'll continue from next video